Hey guys. So I made a previous video about this subject the other day. as the Quincy Model 210 Record of Change 5. It's an older pump. Um, it was my grandfather's. <coughs> the, <coughs> the tanks he had had holes in them and it didn't really work well anymore so I took the compressor to cut it off its uh, tanks here took the wheels off it took the base off of it welded it onto its base made a mobile cart um, it's pretty old and worn out so I decided to rebuild it and that's what I've done over the last five days or so which was order a rebuild kit with new piston rings gaskets seals it came with stuff for the oil pump <clears throat> but this one does not use a geo rotor oil pump it's the older vein style so I did not need the kit for that uh, it came with new <coughs> valve discs and springs but not the valve assemblies themselves so I had a little bit of a bear trying to get the actual valves apart. They were pretty old and stuck. <clears throat> the guy at Quincy, when I called them to ask about this compressor, told me it was probably good to just replace the valves. And I agree with him. However, when I got a hold of a local Quincy rep in order to purchase them, they quoted me at seventy-eight twenty-five a piece. That is $78 a piece for those valves. And that would have been more than I would like to have in this compressor, which is roughly $100 for the rebuild kit. That is the most I kind of want to put into it at this point. Um, uh, just like, uh, I don't know, probably 30 or 40 other dollars in uh, fittings and uh, copper lines, basically. Compression fittings and, and whatnot. But the new... Uh, Rebuild kit also came with new uh, unloader diaphragms. That was a problem I had before. One of the diaphragms was cracked, so it was not fully unloading. And that's also a part of why I wanted to make this video. One, showing off the fresh Quincy Ford Blue honed cylinder rebuilt Quincy 210 unit. And also to outline the pilot valve unloader because I think it's a pretty cool system. Uh, it's similar to what you'd find on a gasoline engine driven uh, compressor. Uh, so I'll fire it up, let it, let it uh, kick off. Kicks off about 115 PSI. So I'll just show you how that goes. I'm just running off this 130 gallon tank. I have the shitty Harbor Freight tank um, off right now. That's just if I really actually need the extra air storage, which is not often. So here we go. Pumping air. And I'm gonna sit here and look at this thing while it pumps up. Got about uh, 25 pounds of oil pressure cold. It's pretty good. I did a uh, the ring seating procedure, which you can see in another video. I didn't talk in it, I just showed it running with the head off. Um, it was for about an hour to seat the new piston rings in there in the freshly honed cylinder. Uh, man, uh, I really shouldn't have touched the thing, damn it. it was, uh, I had about a day's worth of stress trying to get these output valves a little <coughs> copper crush ring gasket here and there's a crush ring at the valve seat the the seat for the the valve assembly not the actual valve seat itself but the seat for the valve assembly is a copper crush ring uh, I had a hell of a time getting the new ones properly in because if you've never taken apart a Quincy before you'll know that the valve hold downs require a special tool had to fabric cobble something out of an old crumb socket in order to make one. I could have just used a wrench on its side, but it would not have given me the torque that I needed to get those things all the way down. 
So we're pumping up air here. We might be getting close to the unloading pressure. And this is the pilot valve. I have it set. And when it gets to the pressure, it's gonna unseat the ball in here. This line's running just uh, up to the tank in a quick connect fitting so I can undo it if I want to. And when we get up to pressure, see there? The pilot ball kicks. And the compressor runs with the air pressure, forcing the intake valves open. As you can see, it's just it's just freewheeling. The intake is kind of like huffing in and out because there is no pressure on the cylinders. So the point of this is continuous run. So when you let out pressure. The compressor kicks back on in order to keep the unit fed. Goes back up to pressure, it unloads the compressor freewheel. See, the rule of thumb that I've come across here and uh, I've heard this from a few different people, is that Quincy recommends, and I think this is more for motor uh, longevity, to keep the, the starter capacitor, uh, you know, nice and healthy, is that if your compressor kicks on or off uh, more than five to seven times in an hour, you need to let it run continuously. Uh, because it can give you bad wear on your on your on your motor itself. Um, so, pretty much, if I know I'm going to be using this for any high consumption tools, I flip it on with the unloader plugged in to the quick connect. If I unplug the quick connect, it just goes to uh, operate start stop on the pressure switch. If you go and buy a new pilot valve it will have a toggle switch here oh. it was just at a low enough pressure that when I barely touched that valve it was enough to reseat the ball and kick the valves back back open or closed sorry so yeah anyway I just wanted to show you guys this uh, this rebuilt compressor it was a pretty easy job. Uh, this old style, uh, I didn't even take apart the oil pump because I, I read that it's not good to take apart the vein style oil pump because I'll never get it back together. So I didn't even touch that. And plus I didn't even have parts to rebuild it. So I, you know, that was the only about the only thing that I followed the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it rule. Uh, everything else, it worked fine, but the cylinders were glazed and kind of worn. Uh, they needed a fresh hone and the rings were in bad shape. Um, so I added new rings. It had a cast iron oil control ring in it, and I added a, uh, a the new ring kit came with a three-piece oil ring set. So that might help with any sort of oil consumption this thing had. Um, one of the recent changes was I shortened up the copper run into the compressor, and I added an inline this inline valve check valve I had laying around. Uh, the the old shitty one that I had that was right here. Um, it wasn't seating correctly. It's just a, it's just a piece of nylon with a spring. I'm sure this is built similarly, but it's uh, a lot, a little beefier in design. And I, I wanted to tee it off at a right angle, just so it would be basically level with the compressor output. The way I have this set up, I teed it off here. And this was, you know, <laughs> I didn't have a pipe plug in a uh, half inch NPT, so what did I do? I used the valve I had laying around and now I have another outlet of the compressor if I need it. But for now it just acts as a uh, a, uh, a plug. Anyway, so there's the Quincy. 
210. Record of change, 5. You're not going to be able to see that. Left my flashlight over there. The plate's down there. It's an old Quincy. It's old as hell. But now it's rebuilt, so it might as well be brand new. Really. Uh, the, the, it, does, it doesn't have uh, uh, rod bearings in it, replaceable rod bearings, but I can still see the cross hatching on the bearing surfaces. And we just kick back on again. So that's that. I just wanted to show you this quick video. It's not really quick, it's 10 fucking minutes. But uh, yeah, if you're watching this, uh, comment on it if you want. And thank you.